a, a university that has a, a, a group program in, in viticulture and knowledge. What is viticulture and knowledge? So um, I was at Cal State Long Beach and I went to, uh, went to the library and I looked at UC Davis and I'm like, oh my God, you can actually get a degree in this? <laughs> I was further along in my studies, so rather than, than transfer, I just uh, changed my emphasis from um, dietetics to uh, food science. And I did all my directed or all my senior projects in fermentation science. Um, and at the same time in LA, I just looked for whatever publication I could get my hands on to learn about wine. Uh, wine Spectator, whatever book, uh, Hugh Johnson. Um, and there was a little wine shop that opened up uh, close to campus in Signal Hill called Wine Country. And I walked in, and a um, gentleman by the name of Randy Kemner, kind of a big guy, he just looked at me and, hey, I said, hi. So I said, I don't think about wine, but I want to learn. Um, maybe wine classes. Yeah, maybe we got an intro to wine class. So I signed up. And I signed up for every class they had there. Um, and finally, I, I, I mustered enough courage to say, do you need any help? Because I really am interested in wine, and I would, I would like to learn more. Um, so he talked it over, and he hired me. Uh, I was just working the cash register, and I did the beer buying. Uh, but Randy Kemner was a gentleman who was this, this person that likes to take people under their wings. And every time a, a, a vendor would come in, Eric, grab a glass, come here. Sit down, try this. Swirl the glass. And, you know, tell, tell me what you smell. Tell me what you taste. And encourage me to take notes. And, um, so that's how my wine career started was in retail. Um, but I, I wanted to go beyond that and, and, and get into winemaking. And uh, a gentleman, uh, Randy Weaver, the general manager at the Valley, came into the store. Doing his rounds, and I pulled. I asked him. I said, "Hey, is there any way I can work for Harvest to be a seller rat?" Yeah, let me get your information. So, jotted down and jotted down with uh, Bill Lock Bunch in Sonoma. And uh, luckily, I got a call from Clay Brock, which is actually an interesting point because I got my job through Clay Brock, who got his job through Ken Brown. So indirectly, Ken Brown hired me. Uh, so. <laughs> but I got a call from uh, Clay Brock, uh, saying, "Hey, I got your name and interest." And I said, "Sure." I'll be more than happy. So I packed up and I moved to uh, San Luis Obispo and worked uh, the 97 Harvest mm -hmm. and at the Valley and, and absolutely fell in love with it. And I think those are, everybody has defining moments in their life, uh, and I have a lot of them, but there's three that stand out. And working for the first vintage at the Valley, uh, I was barreling down at the Cedar Pinot Noir into a Francois Ferrer barrel, and I'll never forget the smell that was coming out of that bomb as long as I live. These like goosebumps, and it just kind of reaffirmed that this is what I want to do. Uh, went back to the wine shop. Uh, uh, when I was a buyer, nobody wanted to touch Southern Hemisphere wine, so I, I took it upon myself to do that, and I fell in love with New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. That was the second defining moment. It was the 97th uh, Cloudy Bay uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, I fell in love with it. It, was just, it, it, just, it, it, it took me to another planet, so I said, this is where I need to go. I want to go to New Zealand. So I called friends, uh, importers, and is there any way I can get a harvest over there? A, a friend of mine who worked for Vineyard Brands said, hey, I'm a winemaker in from Villa Maria, let's meet for drinks. So I met him in the Rings Del Rey, and we ended up having three, four bottles of wine. Uh, two weeks later, I got a phone call from, a, uh, I, I'm sorry, I got an email from her saying, well, unfortunately, while I was gone, uh, we already have our seller crew, but I forwarded her information to the other wineries owned by Villa Maria. And uh, I got an email from Gordon Russell of Esque Valley Estates in Hawks Bay, and said, we'd love to have you. Bring a, bring a good liver and a sense of humor, because that's what it's going to take to work this harvest. I, I packed up in uh, 99, uh, went to Hawks Bay, I worked the hardest, hardest of my life. It was a very old winery built in the 30s. Uh, one forklift, three levels, we ended up rolling barrels up and down, because we couldn't figure out what, what to do. Um, but uh, again, it just reinforced the camaraderie of, of winemaking in, in uh, my life. So, Came back, uh, was accepted to graduate school in technology, and just kind of had this life that went off. Is like I, I was very fortunate to work with winemakers that were hands on, and this is the route I want to go. Um, and right around the same time, I got a call from Clay Brock. Uh, he was at Edna Valley, was going to go over to Zach and Mesa and say, Hey, I need to assemble a new crew. Would you be interested in coming on and, and revamp the lab? Zach had gone through kind of a dark period, he wasn't a steady winemaker for, for some time. So, uh, that was in January, it was January 17th of 2001. I packed up LA and I moved up to uh, Santa Maria. And I gave myself two years at best. I'm like, I don't know if this is gonna work. Um, uh, a kid from LA coming to, to the Central Coast in a small town. Um, but then I had no idea that I was gonna be a part of this, 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 this history, this legacy. I mean, to me, Zach Mesa, I knew the wines of Zach Mesa, but I didn't know 
the culture of Zach Mesa. Um, and I was very fortunate to align myself with individuals that you know, really taught me the culture, um, not just of winemaking and, and, and grape growing, but of community, um, and that what's we're carrying on today. Um, you know, I'm, I'm riding on the, the coattails of the, of the gentleman sitting here, and then there's also individuals that are not here that really kind of set the tone for Zach and Mesa. Um, what I'm doing now at Zacca is, is hopefully carrying that torch and, 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 and carrying on the legacy of Rome Rivals. We feel very strong about that. And I hope uh, Ken and, and, and Bob can talk more. I really enjoy getting the perspective of Ken and Bob. I've heard so many stories throughout the valley, so it's nice to hear it directly of, of, of some of the, the, the history of Zacca, the building of Zacca, and some of the planting of Zacca. Uh, when we came out in 2001, um, we, uh, we, we we had to revamp some of the vineyard um, as well as the winery. Um, if you ever come to the winery, I hope you all do, it is exactly pretty much the way uh, Ken and the gentleman uh, left it. It's, it's an old barn, old floors. We haven't really changed a lot in terms of that footprint. Um, on the vineyard side, we, we looked at what, what worked, and um, I think it, it really was clear that Rome varietals were the varietals that worked on the property. So we had a lot of Riesling, a lot of Chardonnay, uh, some are low. That we ripped out, and we started going through a, a nice replanting process. Started in 2004 uh, with uh, a Mesa B block of Syrah, it was 27 acres. It was the first high density planting for Zacca Mesa, uh, with some new clones of Syrah and some rootstock combinations. Uh, then in 2006, we planted about 12 acres of Viognier, again high density. Um, and then 2008 and 2012, uh, 18 uh, acres both to Syrah, high density with some newer clones. Uh, for us, it's all about learning. Uh, Syrah's come a long way over the years in terms of clonal diversity, and uh, we feel compelled to, to get a better understanding. I brought two wines today, the 2011 Roussan and then the 2011 Black or Black Syrah. Uh, I can tell you about the winemaking, but I'd love to hear Ken and, and Bob's story on <coughs> how that block was planted. So with that, I'll pass the mic back down to Chris. Thank you.